Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. This is the seventh episode of this series where I review note-taking apps on the Tab 6 and in this one we have a brand new app that has just recently joined the Android world and it's called Flexel. This app was previously only available on the Apple ecosystem but after some time of being under development it has been made available to us Android users through the Play Store. Following the tradition of this series, there is a giveaway on this video so make sure you stick till the end to see if you like the app and how you can participate. With that said, let's start with the video. Initially, once we open the app, we are presented with all our notes and folders to the right and at the top left we have a search tool that unfortunately just searches through the title of your notes and not through the actual content that's inside of them. Down below you can access the trash if you have any document that you want to restore or permanently delete. And below that there's a file section where you can navigate through your files which you can then select to import to your notes. Every new document you open is going to move to the top of this recent list which you can also toggle to see once you've marked as your favorites. In the settings under the document viewer options you can decide the scrolling section of your notes to be either horizontal or vertical. And as you can see, one unique feature this app has are pop-up documents, which of course we'll discuss deeper later in the video. Additional to this, you can customize the number of pages per screen from either 1, 2, or 4, which is really useful for when you're reading PDFs or your notes have many many pages, and you can also toggle the status bar and navigation bar off for a more immersive writing experience. On your homepage, you can decide your viewing preference from either a grid or a list view and the sorting from either name, date modified, date created, or size of the file. One interesting option I've found is that after selecting multiple files, you can decide to merge all their content into one single note. However, if you want to create a new one from scratch, the first thing you can customize is the cover, which you can select from many, many different options and different categories. For the template of your page, you can choose the color, orientation, and design. There are currently seven different design options for each of the colors and orientations, and hopefully they expand this, but you can always use your own templates by importing them as PDFs. Once you have your desired configuration ready, we're able to see all the tools available for our note taking. Starting with the tab at the top of the screen, which you can use to navigate through all the notes you've previously opened. All the way to the right, you can see each of the files in more detail as well as choose to close them individually, all of them, or hide the tab bar. On top of this useful tab bar, we have our writing tools. If you press and hold it, you can dismount it for an easier access as well as rotate it for you to choose if you want it vertical or horizontal. There are three different pen options, two of them are actually writing tools and the other one is a highlighter. The difference between these two writing tools is that the second one has pressure sensitivity unlike the first one which performs the same under all conditions. On the customization options, you can change the pen thickness from 0.1 all the way to 20, which is actually a wide range for pen thickness and I'm sure it's going to be helpful for a lot of people. You can also set the pen to only draw straight lines and configure its color from some predefined ones. Also, when customizing the highlighter, you're going to get 20 more levels of thickness and there's going to be an extra option for configuring the ink opacity. The pens you create are going to be stored on the toolbar. You can create as many as you want, which you can then access by sliding through it to see all your pens and highlighters. Next to this, we have the eraser, which has some customization options of its own. You can decide the thickness from an even wider range going from 0.1 to 50 pixels. You can also toggle if you wanted to erase only your pen input, the highlighter or both, as well as being able to clear the entire page you're working on and enable the auto deselect which returns to the previous writing tool you were using after you erase once. Next to the eraser we have the shapes tool which is a great instrument for when you want to create different shapes to attach references to your notes or draw some diagrams. I was recently trying if it's possible to draw quick shapes in here and you can but it's only available for straight lines at least at the moment. The cool thing is that it does allow you to keep moving the line once it's created so hopefully they expand this to be able to recognize more shapes in the future. 
At the end of the toolbar, we have a text box option for when you want to add type text to your notes. If you're interested, you can configure the color and size of the text. Next to this text box tool, we are presented with our way of importing images to our notes. When you tap it, you can choose if you want to add that image from your gallery, from your files, or if you want to take the photo at that specific moment. One great thing is that when you choose the picture you want to import, instead of pasting it right away on your notes, it lets you tap exactly where you want to add it, and then you can choose to resize or crop it. Finally, we have the lasso tool. The implementation that Flexil has chosen lets you select everything that's touched by the lines of this tool. Additionally, after selecting your handwriting, you're able to change its color and pen thickness, which is very useful. And on the customization options of the lasso tool, you can choose in detail what exactly you're going to be selecting when utilizing this tool. In addition to the pen tools, when you tap the pen icon at the start of the toolbar, you switch to a gesture mode. In here, you're going to see that whenever you use the S Pen, there's going to appear some blue lines that will eventually disappear. And at first, I thought this was meant for demonstration purposes, so you would be showing someone your notes and using this to emphasize a given part in them. However, I was completely wrong. These blue lines are intended to help you with some useful tasks when used in a certain fashion. Some of the gestures you can do are erasing any of your handwritten annotations by drawing a zigzag line over them. You can capture an image from your notes by creating a box or drawing an L over the area you want to capture. This has been incredibly useful for when I have to do homework and I want to copy a problem to a new page. Also, if you draw a circle over your annotation, it's like you made use of a lasso tool. And a neat thing that they thought of is that when you've selected a portion that has different types of input, there are going to be toggle options for you to be able to select which groups you want to include in your selection and which ones you don't want. Finally, there are some gestures to help you deal with type text, for when you want to select a small or a big piece of your text, or if you want to underline some of it to make it stand out. Now, if we move to the top of the screen, we have some tools that enhance our note-taking experience. If you don't want to see them, you can always tap the icon at the center to make it disappear. You can tap it one more time to also minimize the pen toolbar, and tap it once more to go back to the initial state. At the top left, we have the page manager, which lets you initially see all the pages of the note you're in. In here, you can tap the plus icon to add a new page at the end. You can tap the icon next to the close button, which will let you add pages in between your notes. And if you tap and hold any of these pages, you can reorder them, duplicate, delete, export them, or you can also move it to any of your other notes. Something I found very interesting is that you can also see any of the pages of your other notes seamlessly. You just tap any of the other notebooks in the app and there you have them, really easy to access and really convenient. The next tool that's located at the top of the screen is the pop-up note window. There's not too much to explain here, it's a pop-up movable window where you can open any of your other notebooks. What's cool is that you can either tap that little icon at the top or you can swipe with three fingers to bring that window up. You can also resize it by gathering or spreading the same three fingers, and if you want to close it, you can swipe down again with those three fingers. Now that we've mentioned these gestures, you can also double tap the screen with two fingers to undo or with three to redo, which let me tell you is, once again, very convenient. If we move to the right portion of the toolbar, we have a search tool that unfortunately at the moment has no support for your handwritten notes. You can just search through the typed text or through the content of your PDFs. Next to it, there's a setting option where you can see all the settings we discussed at the beginning of the video. And finally, there's a side menu that lets you navigate through your pages, see the outline of any PDF you've imported, and it also lets you see the bookmarks and a more detailed look of your annotations, text box created, importing images, and so on. When you finalize editing your file and you're ready to share it, you can decide to export individual pages, individual files, or a combination of files. When you do so, you are going to then choose if you want to export it as a flattened PDF, which means that everything you write or add to the file is not going to be editable, or you can also export it as an original PDF, in which case you are then going to be able to edit your annotations if you have any app that can do this. Additionally, if there's any specific type of input you 
don't want to include in your notes, you can choose not to by disabling them with the toggle feature at the bottom of this pop-up menu. As I mentioned earlier, I've been using Flexil mostly for homework or to be able to sign some documents and send them back, and the file quality has been pretty good. I'm pleased with the exported content, and I also like the fact that you can export a PDF that you can then edit on other apps. Finally, I would like to mention that there's no sync in between your devices, which is unfortunate. They do offer a backup feature that allows you to backup any files you want and restore them later, which is an alternative if you're planning on using the app on different devices. In my opinion, there are some really great features that Flexil has implemented that I'd never seen in any other Android note-taking app, like the pop-up document, the undo gesture, or the ability to export only certain things you've added to your notes. But there are also some things like OCR, quick shapes, or cloud syncing that they are not offering at the moment, and we can just hope that they include in the future. Let me know what is your opinion down in the comments. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's a giveaway of 20 promo codes for some of you to be able to take full advantage of the app. All you gotta do is make sure you're subscribed, like the video, and fill a form that's going to be in the description where you can let me know where I can contact you if you're one of the 20 winners of the promo codes. The giveaway is going to be open for two weeks and I'm going to be announcing the winners on my Instagram stories on May 14th. Thank you all so much for your constant support. Make sure you watch these other videos and I'll see you in the next one. This has been a regular teenager. Take care and be safe. Peace.